Three years later, I lost my son Cole. Through these experiences of immense tragedy and grief, I had to find my own way to move through and beyond, which led me to my mission of helping others decipher, clarify, and live out their true life vision purpose. My goal with this podcast is to give you hope and to let my guest journeys inspire you to make the choice to keep looking out. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Moving Through and Beyond podcast. I'm your host, Carrie Conley, and I get the honor of bringing on some pretty amazing people in this world who are doing big things. And I met this gentleman a little over a year ago. He was speaking at an event that I went to, and we just became fast friends. And he just told me, you know, anytime you need anything, I'll be here for you. And you have absolutely done that for me. And I'm honored to have you here, JC. So JC goes also by Dragon. So I asked him from the very beginning, what do you want me to call you, JC or Dragon? And you told me whatever you want. (laughs) It's so true. So he also has a podcast called Rise Up with Dragon, and I've been on that podcast. It's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And you are all things about mindset, right? Positive mindset, minding your mind, thinking your thoughts very clearly. I would love to to share just a little bit about where you learned that and what you're doing with all of that in this world. Well, I think that, Everything that I've learned, you know, probably ties very nicely into the the focus of your show and the story that I'm going to share. But before I get into that, um, I just want to say, I mean, I think the world of you as well. Mm -hmm. So it's an honor for me to be on your show. And it's an honor for me to be someone that you call and ask for help. You know, it's like, it's one thing if you say, I'll be there for you if you need anything. But people don't always ask for things. So it's my honor to be here. And, um, you know, I don't take it lightly when, you know, there's billions of people in the world. And for some reason, I sit down next to you at a table, you know, so that's probably uh, one of the reasons why we became fast friends as well, right? Yeah, well, it's Um, an honor. And I have learned that about asking, right? That it is as much of a blessing of the person being asked as the one asking. So yeah, that's right. We we spend so much time hoping and praying for things. and not enough time opening our minds up to the fact that everything we ask for is always presented. It just doesn't look like we thought it would be. Maybe it's exactly. Carrie. It's Carrie showing up at, at a table next to you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just just quickly to answer your question before we we get into like how that all manifested. You know, the the, the concept of mindset is is a fascinating one. Um, where I, my work is done is is in the the process that takes place from the the moment that you perceive something. You know, what's interesting about perception is, you know, what I'm referring to when I perceive something or someone or an event happening, um, whatever I think I see also has a lot to do with my seeing mechanism, my program, you know, Mm -hmm. so... I'm a very, very big advocate of, and and you know what, in the space that you've been placing your heart lately, that's something people really focus, you know, uh, they struggle with is this idea of like perceiving that they're having a bad time. Um, I'm a big fan of going back and saying, I wonder why I perceive things that way yeah. um, and how I've been programmed by my mother, my father, my teacher, my preacher, and this crazy society right now that just feeds us stuff to consume on a regular basis. We don't even know we're consuming it. So my message to everybody is, um, you know, whatever it is that you think you see, it just might not actually be. (laughs) It might just be the way you see it. Um, And um, my message of hope for everybody is you can rewire your brain to see whatever it is that you want, good or bad. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, you know, it's so interesting because there's so many people in my life that are a lot like you, JC, that really get people to change perspective. Mm. Um, And it is that. It's why do we always look for the bad first instead of looking for the good? And I think, and and I've become super aware of that this past year personally, right, in myself, because I took some time this year to kind of put a pause on things and figure out what my next move was going to be before deciding to do this podcast. And I became really aware of how much it is so much easier for me to look for the challenges than it is to look for the good. And I think that's just a cultural thing. Yeah, it's a cultural thing, don't you think? Well, I mean, I like to poke a little humor at that. Um, Like, you know, let's, let's just pretend we go back thousands of years ago and, you know, Carrie and JC are hanging, well, 
carrion dragon, right, are hanging out in a cave, right? And we've got a fire going and we're thinking, hey, I'm hungry, let's get some food. But we have to actually think about, is it the right time? Or if, if I step out of the cave, am I going to get killed by a, you know, a saber toothed tiger? So we're, we're wired um, to be afraid. We're, that's the whole stress response system, fight or flight. Um, and that's what helps us jump out of the way of a speeding car and things like that. So it, right. it does work for us. But in this day and age right now, um, we're afraid of everything and we're cautious of everything. So um, that's why we're, we're trained to look for the bad. You know, that's why we're, you know, every now and then, like my mother is an, an example of somebody that be- believes in everything and trusts everyone. And, and we live in a society that's, that tells people like that, you're a fool. And maybe she is a fool, but, you know, that just lends to validate you know, what Wayne Dyer always says is if you change the way you look at things, things you right. look at change. We really right. get to decide whatever it is that we want to see. But yeah, it's it's much, much more instinctive to find the bad than the good because we're 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 structured to be survivalists, you know, more than anything, um, not thrivalists. And that's what we, we always want to do is we want to find out how to move forward and thrive, not just survive. So yeah, right. it's, it's an interesting game and uh, it's not something that you just fix like that. Yeah. Well, again, so many, you know, the listeners that I'm bringing to this show are, I believe, well, we all know, but everybody's struggling with something, right? Mm-hmm. And It's just a matter of being aware of what it is we're thinking, changing the perspective, making some choices of direction that you want to go. And I think just it's just so hard for people at some points. Right. And I know that you've been through some some adversity in your own life. And I would love for you to be able to share that story, if you if you will. Yeah, I'd love to. And uh, you just made me think of that song. Everybody hurts. Um, That's a funny one. So, yeah, you know. Anytime I meet somebody like you or like Sharon Lecter or any of these people that are just like going way above and beyond to go help people, I always think, hmm, I'd like to know that backstory. Um, you know, so it's interesting when you're out there and you're meeting people that dedicate their lives to helping others, um, it's very, very much attached to, you know, either resolved or unresolved trauma. So, yeah. you know, how I've become who I am today is is really probably the most relevant thing because, you know, it's not about what we do, it's why. Um, the best way I can explain it is, um, you know, I, I just found myself at a certain phase of my life um, just after graduating chiropractic school, which, you know, the world was my oyster. I had this amazing job set up and everything. And um, for some reason, I went instantaneously – um, at the just the snap of a finger, I went from being the most confident, borderline cocky, um, <laughs> just certain person that you know, like Tony Robbins, um, to a, just a, a just a dark hole in my life where I just was afraid to even get dressed in the morning. Yeah. Um, and you know, when when you're that kind of person and that happens, I remember I was on a train in, into the city to go to this job. I had this great job and I was getting married and all of these things that I've always wanted were right there in front of me. Um, and all of a sudden I just got scared and I never, I never felt that way before. So if you're a very confident person and you experience that darkness for the first time, you just assume that it's not real and you go, ah, you know, you just pass it by, but this was very real. So that led a sequence of events took place where I just, you know, started for the first time in my life, you know, you know, thinking about this idea of turning my lights out. You know, I I just, I remember I used to hear about that. I even had a friend when I was young that took his own life. And I remember that really shocked me, but I still said to myself, like, I can't imagine how anyone would ever actually execute that. Mm -hmm. So for the first time in my life, I felt that darkness, that fear. um, And thank God, I had um, people in place like my mom and stuff like that that just noticed like, whoa, code red, you know, Houston, we have a problem here. So I find myself sitting in a chair like I'm sitting in right now, sitting across from the person that I never wanted to meet in my life. And that was a therapist, Um, (laughs) 
you know, asking me why I wanted to take my life, you know. So, you know, my ego is still alive wanting to say, that's impossible. I would never do that. But I was a mess. You know, I mean, I probably hadn't showered in like four or five days and that was just not who I was. So what's interesting about that moment, first of all, is um, it was the greatest thing that ever happened. And, you know, we hear that story from people on the other side. It was the worst thing I've ever been through and I never want to go through it again, but it was, it was the day that I was born. You know, it was the day that I actually found my way. So that's why it was such a blessing. So that's another funny thing. It's funny to hear people say on the other side, because I know somebody's listening now that might be in the darkness right now, right. not telling you that you're having a good time. But what I'm telling you is that part of your healing process one day will be to recognize that it was the most amazing blessing that could ever happen. So a sequence of events happened and I had this amazing therapist um, who just began asking me some uh, really good questions. And so, so in any case, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in this chair across from this therapist and, you know, just refreshing and back to what I was saying. It was, you know, I look back at it now and I love that moment um, because I, in my book, so I have a book that's coming out um, in February of 2023, and it's called Makes Sense. Um, and this was the first moment that I ever fell in love with the concept of having what I call a snap moment where something happens and it triggers your brain to just go and pull every file out that's ever been in your brain and just instantaneously take all of them and just look at them and say, oh, that's what is going on right here and just get that level of clarity. And the way it happened was this, and, it, and I share this story because I want people to really um, know that this is possible for anyone. Yeah. Yes. Um, what happened was is she started asking me questions. So like things like, so, you know, tell me about the day that you, that this, this, this started, you know, and all of that stuff. And I'm like, and I didn't want to talk about that stuff. I was just hoping that she was going to just like, blow sage smoke in my face and fix it. Because <laughs> yeah. um, I'm like, I just want to check out. So we, we started to retrace the story. So this is me unveiling the value of retracing things and looking at them through another lens, right? So um, I just remember, you know, I was on a train and, you know, I started to recognize like, boom, it just happened out of nowhere, but I don't know why. She says, well, what time of the year was it? And I was like, well, it's, it was summertime. You know, I had just started my job. And she says, do you remember anything else about that? And I'm like, well, I think it was July because I remember when I stopped working there, I called the guy and said, I can't work anymore. I'm, you know, I'm a mess, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So she's putting it all together and she says, is, is there anything significant about July, right? And, you know, while this is happening, just to give you real time, I know something big is coming. And I don't know if I'm scared of it or excited about it. Mm -hmm. This woman is leading me to this snap moment. And um, she's, I said, well, July's my birthday. You know, that's, that's when my birthday is. And she, she goes, well, is, does that have any relevance to you? And I said, oh, I hate my birthday. I hate it. And she goes, why? And I'm like, I, I, so I, I was like, oh, I just don't like getting gifts and things like that. I'm just not a big fan of my birthday. I, don't even tell people when my birthday, you can ask my wife now, it's still an issue, right? So um, she goes, well, what's the significance of your birthday? And I go, I just don't like my birthday. And she goes, okay. So she left that alone. She says, well, tell me, tell me more about your family and stuff like that. So I told her about some of my dysfunction in my family. She asked me about my parents and she said, what about your parents? And I said, oh, you know, I don't see my dad much because my parents got divorced when they were young. And my mom kind of raised me, but she's a little bit crazy and, you know, whatever. I'm just talking about the average, ordinary, dysfunctional, functional family. Um, and she goes, so your parents got divorced, right? And I go, yeah. And she goes, when did they get divorced? Mm -hmm. And that was the first moment that I had that snap moment where it was like total recall. I don't know if you ever saw the uh, Bradley Cooper movie Limitless, but it was like I, I took this like NZT drug and I tapped into 100% of my brain capacity. Wow. I remember this day when I'm 11 years old, which I had completely erased 
mm-hmm. from my brain. And, and I didn't think that that was possible, that you could actually forget about something that happened. But I did. So I was 11 years old. I walked in the house, and it was my birthday. So we had, a, I think we were having a bowling party, and all this stuff was, was about to happen. So I come home, and I walk in the door, 11 years old. And I look, and my mom is standing at the base of the stairs in her underwear. That's not normal. You know, like, I'm not talking about like a nighty. I'm talking about underwear. And she's crying. And, uh, and I came in and I remember I had this like weird feeling. Like when I was a kid and I got nervous, I would start like licking my lips. I remember that. I okay. go like that. And I said, mom, what's wrong? And she looks at me, she's crying. And she says, your father's leaving us. Mm. And I said to her, I, I don't know what that means. My dad never home anyway. He's always traveling. And I'm like, oh, you're like, where's he going? And she's like, no, he's leaving us. Your father wants a divorce. I didn't know what divorce was, but I knew that it was not good. And uh, so I also looked that day and I realized that my birthday just got bumped. I didn't get a happy birthday or anything like that. So, you know, when you're 11, you know, you look at your mom and you go, hey, you know, can I go back and play with my friends? So I had to go explain to my friends that my birthday was canceled and I had to make up this story and everything like that. So it was like trauma, unresolved, packed, thrown away. So that was the moment that everything in my life changed. And I only saw this therapist once. I mean, I went from needing to be watched round the clock because everybody was worried I was going to kill myself with no end in sight, no light at the end of the tunnel, Mm. nothing. I was like ready to check out. And then in that instant, I was a hundred percent back in control of my life in a, in a, in a second. And we continued the conversation and I made, I said, Oh my God, this is amazing. And it was like, I, I just wanted to get up and run back into life, you know, and I, and I got it. But I also made a decision that day, a couple of decisions. I said, I'm never going to go back to that place again, because I just figured something out that there's a lot of things that I saw happen, but through the eyes of somebody that didn't understand. And now I was a different person. So now I realize I can go retrace anything, but I, I decided I was never going to go back again, and that was the de- day that I also decided that I was going to spend the rest of my life helping everybody else not go that way. So I navigated to where I'm at right now because of that. And um, while I was going through these dark times, you know, uh, just these really dark times, I remember the feeling that when I would be um, moving around, I, I felt like dragons were swooping over me. That was the visual I had and like fire breathing dragons. So I always assimilated that the the darkest evil in my life were dragons. So as I started to move into this empowerment triangle from the drama triangle, um, I recognized that if, you know, the the only way to deal with a monster in the closet is to go hang out in the closet. So I became the dragon, rise up with dragon comes from that space of me bonding with that which scared me the most. And uh, that's how I came up with the dragon. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It's such a good story and it's so powerful the way you describe it. Yeah. And only somebody who's been there like this can define, can describe it the way you can. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I, I feel like the, the layer of hope in here, of course, obviously, because you're here talking about this is that yeah. people need to become aware that there is probably some, some sort of unresolved trauma that is causing them to have these thoughts and feel the way they feel. And it's not wrong because I think a lot of what's layered on top of the feelings too, Dragon, tell me if you feel like this is the case is that it's the weight of the guilt and the responsibility and feeling like it's all their fault. Right. Yeah, You know, I mean, I, I feel like from the perspective that I'm in now in my polished state, right. Um, because when you're in that, you're just going to grab onto anything that makes sense. Right. So that's, this is the concept of my book. Um, you know, you, you're, you're going to try to explain it. And very often what we say is, you know, it's associated with guilt and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just, it's back to that concept of perception. You know, um, if you look at your life as a line, you know, from the beginning of your life to the end, 
I don't know, just let's just say you have 75 years if you're lucky, right? Because mm-hmm. we don't even know if we have this day. So there's, you look at, there's two aspects of the line. One is that you have time, right? You're working against time. So like right now, Dragon is 51 years old. So I'm somewhere past the 50 yard line, hypothetically, if we look at it at a mm-hmm. 75. Um, and you know what I'm what I'm now working on with urgency is like how am I going to make my time count? How am I going to create my footprint and all that? But then there's another. And what's interesting about the time though, quickly is think about how much time it takes to completely shift. In the case of that therapist, it was really less than an hour. It was 15 minutes. Mm. So how do you measure that on my timeline of 75 years? So there's some hope for people. Is that it could happen anytime and it could happen fast, right? But then the other aspect of the line is you're either above or below the line. And that's about state management. You know, when you're below the line, you're a victim, right? This is the work from Jim Dethmer and the Conscious Leadership Alliance. You're either a victim, a villain, or a hero. And, and down there is where you shame yourself and you blame. So if somebody says it's guilt, it's, it's me, right? That's the drama triangle. But when you shift, And that person, all they need to do is first believe and understand that there's a file in your head that like an attorney finding the evidence they need to to fix, you know, figure out a crime. There's a file in your head that if we pull it, right, and and unveil it, you you can snap right back into motion. And I I firmly believe it. I've seen it so many times. Mm. Um, And what happens is, is you move back into responsibility, into the empowerment triangle. And all that means, Carrie, is that you just start looking at things differently. So here's what's interesting about where I'm at now. Do I ever wake up with depression, feelings of depression and anxiety and fear? Do I ever get thoughts in my mind again about the, that dark place and the fear of going there? Absolutely. And I would say more than, more than not, I wake up that way. And that's why I have my morning structure just to, to mm. command my day as I want. But I've also learned, and this is a stoic principle and those that are having a rough time right now, don't like hearing this, but I've also learned this concept of the obstacle is the way is that when I feel that way, I've actually learned to get excited about it because it means that something big is coming. If the universe challenges me that much to make me afraid of living, that is a sign, first of all, that the universe is aware of me, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But I actually go, ooh. So I've actually rewired my brain, like the anxiety that people feel when they're about to walk out in front of 15,000 people, like they're paralyzed, right? That feeling now for me has now been reinterpreted as excitement. And I get into this curious, explorative state and I'm like, I wonder what's about to happen. Right. So that's fun. You know, I know that feeling you're talking about. And I've also, I know the same thing. So I used to host a big event every January Mm-hmm. Um, my vision is victory, two and a half day event, huge. We spent six months planning it, filling sure it. Thing. That was, that was the right. thing I heard you speak about that day. And I said, man, that's, he's got a third degree black belt in that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, but leading up to it, the anxiety would get higher, the doubt would get higher and, and it would debilitate me until I figured out that I must be about ready to do something really good. That's right. Because if I wasn't why would I be under attack? Yeah. Right. And I think so many people live in, in the comfort zone because they don't want that feeling and they're perceiving it as something bad is going ba- is about to happen. And I've learned the same thing of you learned is that if I'm not out of my comfort zone, that means I'm, I'm not living to my highest potential and I'm not making the impact I want to make. Just doing this podcast was a big leap for me. Oh, yeah. right? I remember yeah. the day I remember the day you, you told me about the, your project coming up, and I and I, I felt like I knew you enough to hear in your voice that you were pushing into it. Yeah, I I, I always speak about this um, concept. I don't know if swearing is allowed on your show, but um, God has and the universe has mysteriously placed everything that we desire 
comfortably on the other side of a pile of poop, right? So that's yeah. the that's the piece. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So everybody believes that. Everybody knows that, right? Everybody understands that there's no free lunch and you got to do the work. And you know, if you look at the top of the mountain where all the successful people sit, um, if you actually go up there, you'll see there's a seat for you and nobody's ever going to take it. It's yours, mm-hmm. which is proof that it's there for you and it's there for you to take. But the question is, is how did these people get up there and what do I need to get? Like, and you can read every book in the world and learn that it's going to take hard work and consistency and perseverance and grit and all these things, right? So my interpretation of it is, is if you if we're all in agreement that to get from here to where I want to go, if it's sexy, this place that I want to go, yeah. it's not a big goal. You might even be there. Henry Ford says, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. But if it's sexy and it's big and it's part of your footprint, you're going to be challenged. And that unveils that the secret to success, the secret to life is just becoming really good at navigating the poop, either going through it, around it, over it, under it, sometimes recognizing that it's not even there. But that's the secret of life. So when the poop shows up and it smells and you know, whether it's right before the stage or the event or this dark hole that I was in. Um, I believe the secret is, is to look at it and recognize that it could be a good thing. And one of the, uh, I did a lot of research on this um, for my book, this whole concept of anxiety, because I struggled massively with that. Um, it was just that un- uncertainty and me learning to like try to control uncontrollable things. But I read this article one time, which was another snap and pulled a file and it showed um, two brains and that showed the brain mapping, the, the, the brain activity of two brains. And one of them was the brain um, map of somebody that was elated and excited. And the other mm-hmm. one was the map of somebody that was having a full on anxiety panic attack and mm-hmm. they were identical. So Mel Robbins talks about this a lot, that anxiety is a mis, it's a miss, it's a misperception, a misinterpretation of excitement very often. So this goes right back to this whole concept, you know, it's all a fantasy. The day you realize that you control it is the day you get back in control. Yeah. Well, I think that's our message of hope here today for people who are listening and thinking, all right, how do I have this happen? And what I'm taking away from this dragon is that with the right help, yeah. And I think that's really important that people hear this, that you had family surrounding you, you had a therapist, you had people that yeah. were protecting you as you were working through this. They didn't feed into the to the beast. They didn't they didn't fuel the dragon, right? They just were there to support me. Not try to right. fix things, but also not try to say, Oh no, this is terrible. Right. Uh, positive affirmation. Right. Um, that you sought out the help. And I love, and I'm, I'm going to remember this forever now, your visual about pulling the files, Yeah. right? Having the right process of pulling those files and becoming aware of them. That's and my to not judge you, judge yourself in the process. Yeah. Just is what it is. It's a file that got tucked away that is a part of your trauma and it got triggered. Forgive you for you, no, not what you do. Right. And that this thing, and this is another common denominator with everybody that I've talked to, Dragon, is that everybody has said, what I've learned on the other side of this is that that was a part of my purpose to learn so that I could now take this into the world and help other people. And I think that's the message of hope. And you talked a lot about having something sexy on the other side of the poop, right? I talk about this all the time about the reason why you have to have this bigger than life leap off the page vision vision for your life. Yeah, Get you through just about everything. I got, I got a great way of, uh, of interpreting this because I remember I heard you speak. Um, you know, I think a lot of people struggle with self-confidence and yeah. you know, they're, you know, somebody, uh, one of my favorite all-time books is uh, by Gay Hendricks called The Big Leap. And he talks about, do you know? Quoted all the time. Right. So he talks about the hidden barriers. So what that book unveils is that you actually have things put in place to stop you from going forward. Yes. And, you know, that's such a massive, massive, you know, lesson right there is just to recognize that, you know, 
what you really need is something that is important enough that you'd be willing to fight through the poop, right? So my the way I, I show people that they have that in them is, and I'll play with you right now, is if, Carrie, if I if we were, you know, sitting in uh, you know, the shallows of a lake and I took your head and I pushed it under water, mm-hmm. what would be your greatest desire? To come up for air. Okay, so air, right? Mm-hmm. But if I kept holding it against your efforts, would that desire for the air increase or decrease? Increase. What would you do if you didn't believe in yourself and the timing was wrong and you weren't motivated? Would that have any impact on you doing everything in your power to get the air? So here's an example. If you have a goal in life, and it could just be to get out of the darkness, and it's as important to you as air, nothing will stop you. We're all sleeping giants. And once we wake up, truly wake up, we stomp over everything that we ever thought was holding us back. So... Good. So good. This is why you and I became instant friends because we're talking the same language. So I appreciate you. And this is going to help so many people. And I know that you are always willing to help people and they're going to want to find you. So how do we direct them to you? So, you know, my podcast, Rise Up With Dragon, you can go to riseupwithdragon.com. Um, and you know, I've got my, my health transformation coaching business, but you can find all that from there. But what, what I'm really, really excited about now is, um, this book, you know, this is an eight year progress makes sense. So if anybody goes to rise up with dragon.com and just signs up for my, I have a weekly newsletter called the dragon's Lair, one from the vault. Um, if you like anything that I said, it's all about that stuff but it automatically signs you up for um, information about the book and we're going to give a free chapter away and stuff. Um, I've got some real big, big people um, involved in the book as well. So I'm psyched about that. And, you know, the whole concept of putting the book in people's hands is probably in alignment with what you're trying to do with this show. You know, I just, I just just love the idea of somebody one day telling me that I helped them find the ladder that was always there in that dark hole and just climb out, you know? Me too. Yeah. I'm so blessed by you in my life. Thank you so, so very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you all for listening to this episode of Moving Through and Beyond. I'm your host, Carrie Conley, here to remind you to keep looking up. If you found this episode inspiring or helpful, please share it with a friend or a family member. In order to be successful on this mission, I can't do it alone. Connect with me at www.carrieconley.com. And don't forget to sign up for my weekly Do It On Purpose newsletter. Let's build this life-giving vision movement together to end this epidemic, save lives, and create purpose. Mm -hmm.